Drilling a hole in a square tube with a regular large twist drill, which has a wall thickness of 2.4 millimeters, is a really big challenge. You can get through and drill a hole, but the hole will never be nice and round. It will always end up being hexagonal, pentagonal, and all sorts of shapes. There are a few reasons for that. The first reason is that the cutting edge is way too big with large drills. The other reason is that the home cutter is way too long. That's why it works the whole area all the time and creates an unwanted vibration. And that's why we end up with an angular hole. Can you actually get a nice hole with regular large twist drills without pre-drilling? The answer is a clear yes. And how that works, I will show you now. I'm sure each of you has tried to drill into a square tube with a wall thickness of 2 to 3 minari using a pretty large regular twist drill. It works, but it's really tough. Have to say, that's really, really a big challenge for everyone. But there is a small solution to demonstrate all of this. I have a regular 19 millimeter drill here. I've sharpened this drill normally for steel. And now I'm trying to drill a hole for a square tube that's 40 x 40 x 3. Unfortunately, I didn't have a 2 millimeter wall thickness with me. You can really see that the result is much, much better. But now, let's drill a small hole. I have a regular drill press here. I've turned the speed down as much as I can. And I'm using this 19 millimeter drill here. Tightening everything up. And here we go. In the year 2001, when examining the outcome of the analysis, it becomes evident upon closer inspection that the shape observed is far from being perfectly round. This observation is quite intriguing because, at first glance, one might expect a more circular form. However, the detailed examination reveals a distinct lack of roundness, which is an important characteristic to note in this context. Sometimes it's a triangle, sometimes it's five. Now the hexagonal hole is the first thing I need to do. Please, this twist drill. As I said, this is a regular twist drill. This one here is turned down. That wasn't me. I got it. Turn down like this so that you can also hold it with a chuck. So the first thing I need to do is just grind it all straight, and then we'll move on. And you'll see what actually happens. And now the fun really begins. First, we need to grind a hop cutter. But in this case, we're not grinding it positively. We're grinding it in the negative range. We're still trying to grind it to 120 degrees. Normally, the drill is at a positive 120 degrees. We're grinding it now to negative 120 degrees. 120 degrees is very optimal for wall drilling into steel, for drilling into metal. Also, we need to make sure that the main clearance surfaces are ground properly because the drill is now working in the negative range. We're basically grinding a hole cutter here. And the hole cutter doesn't have a all cutting edge in the middle. Exactly for this reason, so it works as little as possible. In between, we need to make sure to cool the drill and of course watch that it doesn't get really, really hot. If we've done everything right, then we also have a very, very small cross cutter right away. Ideally, or the cross cutter is smaller because the cross cutter doesn't actually cut very well. It pressed the material, and that's usually the same. Regular twist drills. If we've done everything right, then the result looks something like this. And now we still need to do the fine work. Please pay attention to this. The cross cutter needs to be higher than the tip of the main cutter. That's really important because otherwise the bottom won't work. The height difference between the tip of the main cutter and the cross cutter always depends on the material. If I want to drill a 4 mm thick square tube, I always make sure that the cross cutter takes at least half of the material. So, the cross cutter is 2 mm higher than the main cutter. The cross cutter is ground so small that when you work with a center punch, it fits perfectly into the grain. 
If it's bigger, then we already have a bit of a problem. And normally, it's not necessary to pre-drill for these drills at all. It might even be worse if it's pre-drilled. And here is our final result. Of course, that could be nice, but I'm definitely sure. Mm. It's going to be great and will work well. Now we have nothing else to do but to do the first test drill. I want to be completely honest, sharpening a 30 millimeter drill bit like this is much, oh, much easier than a 19 millimeter drill bit because that's just a bit too small for that. And now let's try, oh, drill a hole. Unfortunately, my drill bit is no longer in the best condition. It's really having big problems. Already. In this demonstration, we are examining a component that exhibits a notable amount of movement, specifically over a millimeter, of play. This level of play can be critical in various applications, as it may affect the precision and functionality of the component in question. To illustrate the impact of this play, we conducted a detailed analysis and testing procedure. The result of this thorough examination is quite revealing. Despite the initial concerns regarding the play, the outcome was a perfectly formed hole. This result underscores the importance of understanding the tolerances and allowances in mechanical components, as well as the potential for achieving desired outcomes even when initial conditions appear less than ideal. By carefully considering these factors, we can ensure that the components function as intended, maintaining the integrity and performance of the overall system. Now I'm going to measure that right away. So, where's my caliper? And oh, 19, 19.1 millimeter. So I'm saying let's measure it 110 larger again. Yeah, now I can only measure 19.21. So this drill bit has a diameter of 19 millimeter. It's already not in the best condition. It's already pretty bent. It's really taken a beating. I think it's as old as my dad, but still it managed to drill a beautiful hole. And this hole is exactly 19 aminos, so not exactly far because it's 110 more, but I think it's less than 110. It's been sharpened like that. I think that's good. I find that useful. I assume some of you have already had these problems and maybe with this little trick I've solved your issues. You saw earlier those were just regular sharpened drill bits. If any of you are indeed interested in how to sharpen a drill bit to a normal range or how it's usually done, feel free to definitely leave a comment below and I'll absolutely show you exactly how I do it, step by step, with great detail and precision. There are different methods. Everyone does that. I think differently. I assume that's how I do it. That works pretty well because my holes are almost always perfect. Thanks for the video. Thanks for watching. Until the next video.